Okay, hello, and thank you for joining us in this video today. Uh, this is Dr. Helene Wynn from New Jersey, Hackettstown, New Jersey, and my name is Dr. Christina Jansen, and I'm a podiatrist, and I practice in Midtown Manhattan. So we thought it'd be a good idea to have a discussion on uh, how to treat, in different methods, foot pain. Dr. Wynn is a specialist in minimally invasive surgery, and I am a specialist in biomechanics, or conservative treatments for foot pain. So thank you very much for coming to join me today. Well, thank you, Christina, uh, for having me uh, joining you in very nice, uh, beautiful beach house uh, in South <laughs> Jersey. Uh, well, um, you know, our lab is very busy with patient care, so, you mm -hmm. know, this opportunity has come by, and I don't want to miss uh, out this opportunity to get together with Dr. Jensen to talk about uh, foot health, and since this April month is a National Foot Health Awareness, so I think it's a oh. perfect time oh. for us to get together to <laughs> educate the public, you right? <laughs> hey, you know what? We're always on something. We're yeah. so busy with patients. Oh, so, so busy, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So both so busy. So yeah, this so is, we really had to carve out our time in right. order to do this. Right. And to but us, I, every day is a Foot Health Awareness. Yes, right? every day. So every day. We, we don't have a month, a particular month, right. but... Uh, so uh, yeah, with, with that, we, we would like to share with public, you know, the the non-surgical solution and surgical solutions um, for any of uh, foot health, foot deformities, and you know, I think that you kind of have both of us here, the best of both mm -hmm. worlds of uh, conservative care and and uh, surgical care. So um, uh -huh. you know, so I think that's a great chance or great opportunity to educate the patient. Yeah, because people go online and they say, you know, my foot is killing me now for a while. And uh, you go online to see what kind of solutions are out there. And Dr. Google and Dr. YouTube. Yeah. So you see the <laughs> podiatrist, uh, what is a podiatrist, and orthopedists and physiatrists and physical therapists all uh, treating foot pain. So you don't really know what in the world to do. There's gadgets you can buy for your foot pain. You know, should you just be your own doctor? So it's very difficult. So I thought that it would be a good idea to do a discussion that reminds me of the first year of podiatry school, Introduction to Podiatry 101. And uh, one of the first lectures we had as young, nervous students was, uh, let's divide treatment plan into conservative treatments and surgical treatments so we could decide how to best approach a certain um, foot condition. So Christina, so what um, what I, I did, the same thing, uh, we got a similar training. Uh, I got trained uh, more focused on surgical option and I, mm -hmm. I believe that we'll talk about one of our conversation. Mm -hmm. You also trained to do um, procedure and surgery very yep, aggressively as well, right? Yes. So we always start at some point, So, yep. uh, but somehow our path is kind of like our career path is leading to different because we identify yeah. that what is more important for our uh, personal gratification as well as mm -hmm. helping patient. I think that is more important as we become, uh, we practicing more, we see more of uh, patient and how we can help with their conditions. So my path is I take into, I start out with traditional surgical uh, training and now I'm taking my path into minimal invasive approach. And that is one of the approach that I don't think a lot of public, general public aware of that mm -hmm. it is a solution surgical solution to correct foot and ankle deformity with no hardware. Yeah, and can you explain what it is? Minimally invasive surgery. I don't think a lot of people have even heard of it. Yeah, so uh, I didn't even know about that uh, until I got to my training. One of the lucky things that I found that I rotate through a plastic surgeon um, uh, rotation and I saw her how she corrects certain things. To me at that time, now 18 years ago, 19 years ago now, <laughs> um, you know, but that is the first encounter I have about minimal invasive approach, but to non-podiatry setting. Yeah. Ah, and it's, it's just amazing. And when we graduate, we so influenced by hardware company, pharmaceutical is pushing using hardware as a fixation to correct bunion, hematose, and all other medical. That's how I learned. I was originally uh, a surgical resident. Yes. And in those days, because I'm older than you, <laughs> uh, we did uh, open surgery only. We made very large incisions, three or four inches in the poor little foot. And then you would cut soft tissue to get to the bone and uh, make your bone cut. But because the soft tissue was cut, 
the cut was very unstable, so it had to be stabilized with hardware, with K wire, and pin screws, mm-hmm. monofilament wires, yes. plates, you name it. We put metal in there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, we had to because we'd made such a big incision and cut all the soft tissue support away. So, right, right. Uh, and it's still really that's the majority of foot surgery is done like that right yeah. now. And uh, yeah, is it still carrying through the traditional approach is still going through and uh, you know, that is what set minimal invasive techniques uh, apart is that uh, through a very tiny incisions as, as little what I how I do is a I tell patient it's a poke incision it's a two millimeter incision. Wow, that's skin. small. And then that will be able to get my instrument in correcting the deformity without using any hardware. Mm-hmm. And the patient will be able to walk the same day. Okay. And that procedure. That wasn't true when we were doing surgery back then. <laughs> no, <years> no. <laughs> yeah, we had to get the patient on uh, some sort of uh, crutches or you know yeah. weight bearing. Oh, they couldn't like, put any weight on the foot. Yeah, no. yeah. There's no weight bearing. So, uh, so with this minimal invasive technique, that we'd be able to get the patient walk on the same day. Mm-hmm. Uh, the procedure can be done in the office because of just local anesthesia. The patient doesn't have to go through sedation at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so literally just a calming medication for the patient to sit mm-hmm. still for about an hour and patient get up, all the dressing and all the strapping uh, be able to put in place and patient will be walk out with their family and, um, and just like walking through the whole recovery process. Mm-hmm. And that is the difference between minimal invasive approach versus the traditional approach. I think you're probably one of the top 10 minimally invasive surgeons in the United States. Yeah, I we are. I mean, uh, looking at the internet, I would say, <laughs> you know, well, I try, way up you there. know, I, I, for me, I, uh, I try to be humble about this because, you know, there's so many ways to help patients. And I think my way of helping patients is provide the solution for the patient. With a traditional uh, surgical technique on foot and ankle surgery, that we have an uh, age limitation. So with this minimal mm-hmm. approach, I'd be able to help the patient who older. Mm-hmm. And that's when the, the ability of walking, mm-hmm. uh, uh, mm-hmm. be more mobile and be active is so important mm-hmm. compared to the younger generations. Mm-hmm. So I'd be able to do a, a, a bunion, a hematoid procedure or correction to the patient as old as 94, 96. I mean, can we do that under traditional approach? No chance. Exactly. So <laughs> you can't afford them not walking. We for can't. Uh, yes, yes, no. yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, and uh, but you know, beside that, I'll talk about the minimal or inter, uh, surgical interventions. We also want to talk, know about what are the options before the patient think about surgery. And I think that's when I would like to pick on Dr. Jensen's brain here. That yes. you know, she's <laughs> very. Uh, uh, I would say she is genius in terms of bi- biomechanic and evaluation and offer the patient a solution, a non-surgical solution. So for those patients who are not a surgical candidate, will still be able to use, but also prevent the patient to come to me for the surgical intervention. So <laughs> I think that is a very important role and hope. Yeah. So Dr. Jensen, if you don't mind, just like a briefly um, share with us and share with the public here mm-hmm. uh, with the biomechanical evaluation and how would you look at the, uh, a patient foot deformity? How will you evaluate and how is your um, treatment plan would be? If you can share with well I'll tell you a little bit about my history because mm-hmm. uh, I find your history really interesting that you were um, first exposed to your type of surgery from a plastic surgeon uh, my, my experience was that I uh, had a very high powered surgical residency in New York City so I rotated through 10 11 12 hospitals in the city did a lot of open surgery a lot of ER work um, uh, did hundreds and hundreds of uh, cases and then uh, so in my private practice I had a surgical practice I did uh, traditional open surgery and then uh, just for some extra money I got a job with an older podiatrist who was making orthotics by hand and as a matter of fact I was so ashamed that I was taking this rinky-dink job I didn't even tell him I was a podiatrist in the beginning <laughs> so, but I, I he, he paid a little bit of extra money and um, uh, he uh, taught me how to make orthotics by hand, and he had gone to podiatry school in the 40s, believe it or not, and just to date myself, this is like 30 years ago. Uh, so he was still making orthotics the old-fashioned way, 
that they used to do it in 1940, 1950, which was to make a plaster of Paris uh, model of the patient's foot and then layer materials on it, layer by layer, and then grind it down, add posting, grind it again, very labor intensive work. And at the time, I, it was just for extra money and I, I was doing a lot of surgery, you know, during the week. And, um, but little by little, I really enjoyed it. It was very artistic. I, I felt like I could really uh, expose my creative side. I enjoyed it very much. And I, I got very good results with the handmade orthotic, with the Plaster Paris cast. And then, um, little by little, I just started doing more orthotics, splints. Uh, the old doctor had taught me how to make latex shields and, and uh, spacers and splints and all kinds of conservative treatment. And then uh, podiatrists really uh, stopped making orthotics by hand in their office. And they started using factories. Uh, they could get uh, orthotics uh, very inexpensive, fifty, sixty dollars. Uh, you know, and, and meanwhile, I was using three hundred dollars worth of materials to make orthotics. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, so of course, people abandoned the expensive, labor-intensive way to make orthotics. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed it, and I got very good results by doing things very in a very tedious manner, very sophisticated manner. And then um, I began to travel all over the place, learning about biomechanics, learning about orthotics. I went to Oklahoma, I went to Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. I just kept traveling and picking people's brains uh, about how they made orthotics. I did it in Europe. I went to, I, I learned in Holland from a biomechanist. I just, anywhere somebody was making something, I, I went there and bothered them and spent time with them. So that's how I kept adding to my knowledge of biomechanics. And then uh, really every podiatrist uh, either had retired, the older pe podiatrists had passed away, uh, until little by little, I believe I'm the only podiatrist left uh, on the East Coast, maybe. <laughs> okay. I think there's one or two other podiatrists in the United States that do what I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, so now I have given up surgery. I have a conservative uh, method only of treating patients. Mm -hmm. So, and that's when I, now the audience can see certainly how you and I have very different practices because you have a, a very sophisticated, um, you know, special way of treating patients and so do I, which is actually kind of dramatically different. And I think that we, like, just like kind of like what we start out with a conversation, we start from surgical training. Mm -hmm. And I think that you have that knowledge about the surgical approach. I think that and helps now, me. Yeah. Yes, and it's yeah. helped you to guide the patient or be able to provide the patient uh, a solution, mm -hmm. non-surgical. Or even after surgery, you know, you can still make mm -hmm. that body. You know, surgery is not the end. Surgery can be just a beginning of bending feet. They still need to maintain that. And that's when, you know, you can also help the patient on that, you know, transition as well for them to get back to their walking and prevent any further deformity may happen, even after surgery. And he, here's a, a question that people might want to ask mm -hmm. me is, they might ask me, um, do I ever send a patient out for surgery? Because mm -hmm. it's okay if I don't do it. Mm -hmm. But um, certainly there are situations where the patient does need surgery. I would say one situation is when the foot no longer functions properly, for example, hallux uh, rigidus mm -hmm. means that the big toe joint doesn't move anymore. Right. Um, I, I send patients for surgery uh, because I, if, the, if that joint were to flex again through surgery, uh, I can do a better job with the orthotics. So I do refer patients for foot surgery. Mm -hmm. And I do also, for me as a surgeon, if I, after a procedure, and if we know that is this patient like for a bunion deformity. Bunion deformity is mm -hmm. when the big toe have a big bump uh, and it's affecting the patient when they wear footwear, uh, uh, dropping inside of their shoes. And that is a majority of my patients coming in. They haven't gone to any conservative option, but the pain mm -hmm. is so severe that they not be able to tolerate to oh, walk on. That's a very good point. I would, I would say that's another... Uh, uh, um, time when I do send the patient for surgery because right. the joint they're in so much pain they that uh, surgery is a very good option at right. that point right so I how I usually tell patients yes I can take the pain away 
I can remove the bump, I can realign the joint, but to in order for the patient to prevent this deformity from happening, I will send to Dr. Jensen and refer out for orthotics, <laughs> yes? So because that uh, any a foot and ankle deformity mostly is coming from the faulty foot structure. And that's mm -hmm. like, to, we had to correct the underlying problem. Surgery is only take away the pain immediately Mm -hmm. And it realigned to a proper way because it's been compensated for so long. But it's not really correct the underlying problems, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is something that most of the time, most of my patients, I refer to uh, orthotics afterward. It's just for support for the younger patients. You know, they're going to be very active. At, you know, if for older patients, something mm -hmm. like accommodating that would be sufficient enough. But it's for yeah. the uh, accommodating with the you know, with the biomechanical. That's interesting. Uh, I have a question for you, Dr. Nguyen. Um, do you ever do surgery sort of for cosmetic reasons? Because that is where you would have me. I, you know, the foot, if I see someone with a tremendous bunion, mm -hmm. uh, they say to me, you know, I, I just, I can't wear sandals. My feet look so ugly. I don't want my grandchildren to see my feet. So, uh, you know, that's a weakness in a conservative approach. You know, right. I can't change the way the feet look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you ever uh, have patients that come in and their interest is cosmetic? Yes, I do. I do have many, uh, especially what, uh, when patients say follow me through social media, they see the result afterwards. So they're really mm -hmm. impressed with that. Uh, how I tell the patients is that there's two pain component when the patient comes to see us, the doctor, to see the doctor, right? Whether it's a physical pain, which is really that deformity, foot and ankle deformity really bother them with pain-wise. Mm -hmm. The other part is emotional pain. Mm -hmm. So I have the younger, 17 years old. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Very I see that, severe yeah. bunion. She, does she mm -hmm. really have pain, like physically? No. But when she go to the beach and she wears sandal, all her friends saw her toe cross over. Yeah, not even that. They go over to visit their girlfriends and they take their shoes off and they're eating popcorn. And yes, you know, yes, yes. Hiding and their that's feet when under the, the rug. emotional <laughs> pain at 17 years old, yeah. you be very cautious and, you know, yeah. subconscious about your body. And that is something, you know, if we be able to, you know, not even the physical pain, but like emotional pain at that age is so important mm -hmm. because that's just like bring up the self-confidence and that's something, can you know, I think conservative option is no, you know, it kind of like not really taking care of that part of it. Yeah. Not really address the that. patient concern at that mm -hmm. level. So that's when the procedure is coming in and with minimal invasive approach that we can do that with like incision as little at two millimeter. So oh, I have seen, I, got, I have seen patients that came in and said, you know, I'm thinking about surgery, but I'm here for a second opinion and uh, surgery is very expensive and, um, I, I'm also frightened, so uh, I'm afraid to have foot surgery because my mother had foot surgery 20 years ago, and 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 she was it was so painful. So, mm -hmm. you know that that's uh, one of the reasons why a patient will see me and want conservative care. Yeah, yeah. I I do. I have patients coming in with all different concerns because uh, I think that foot surgery is so popular. They either they know their family have one, have yes. been through it, their <laughs> yes. friend have been through it, yes. and a friend or a friend have been through it, and yes. it's horrible pain, you know, yeah. like, I think that the uh, idea of foot surgery is not pleasant. Any type of, like, surgery is not pleasant, you know, and the fear of uncertainty, we don't know what could happen, mm -hmm. and that's not pleasant. People Thought put me. it off. That's why we tendency to push off our, yeah, put it off uh, to, to get the care for. And with the minimal invasive approach, I'd be able to share the patient. I give the show the patient a before and after picture and share with the patient what we can do to help. Um, I mean, the patient virtually have no downtime. I have patient, I, I do procedure on Friday, I get back to work on Monday. Wow, okay, that's never you gonna know? happen with open surgery. <laughs> right, exactly, so, uh, and, wow. and that is the solutions <laughs> out there, and uh, you know, any surgery, I tell patients, don't think that having surgery as the end, it's the beginning of their new feet. Mm -hmm. And I think with that mindset, is be able to put the patient at different level of care for their body. Mm -hmm. And yes, um, about pain, right? I also address the patient about pain um, as the issues for surgery, but it's the pain that they have right now Mm -hmm. less than or more than if they think about having surgery.